these deals are gonna run out. And like the deals never run out. It's impossible for deals to run out. I flipped one property four five times over my years. The same. Price. What's up guys? Joe McCall here from the Real Estate Investing Mastery Podcast. And I got a special guest today. We're gonna to be talking about cash flow with the one and only Antonio Edwards. I've known Antonio for a long time. I've probably known him longer than he's known me, uh, but he's a very active investor and influencer. And we're gonna hear about his story, how he got started into real estate and why I'm still, I, I, we were talking about this. I wanted to find out why were you moving to California during the past start of the pandemic when everybody was leaving California from Florida. So we're gonna talk about that with Antonio, but he's also doing some really cool things. And we're gonna be talking about cash flow, why cash flow is so important for wholesalers and investors mm -hmm. today. And Antonio has done it all. He's done all kinds of deals from fix and flip, from rehabs to wholesaling to creative financing. He's done it all. He's been, he's a veteran in the business, been doing this a long, long time. And so I just appreciate having him come and we're gonna be talking some old war stories probably and talking about what he is seeing that's working today in this market. Um, even though he still lives in California, for what, and I can say all this because I'm from Southern California, but I'm, so I'm gonna give him a hard time find out why on earth he's still there but uh it's gonna be a great show first i want to tell you though i have a special workshop that i do every saturday called the land fast start master class and if you go to joemccall.com slash saturday right here you will find this special class that i do it's just seven dollars and i basically start with the premise if i had to start all over again from scratch and go into a brand new market what would i do so in this workshop, you're gonna see me pick a market with you. We're gonna go in and we're going to pull a list, see what the hot markets are, where the buyers are. We're gonna pull a list of buyers and sellers. We're gonna start a marketing campaign of cold calling and direct mail. And then we're actually gonna start making offers. It's a full comprehensive A to Z class on how to start a brand new land flipping business. Just go to joemccall.com slash Saturday. It's just seven bucks, cool? All right, let's bring Antonio on. Antonio Edwards, how are you, man? I'm good, Joe. Thanks for having me on the podcast, man. Like I said we've known each other for so long, and this yes, I can't believe we're I, just. I don't know. I don't know why we've not done a podcast before, <clears throat> but uh, glad man. you're here. Yeah, yeah. likewise. Let, let's start with why you got started in real estate, and how long ago was that? Well, I guess I'm gonna go back to a, a year where people probably won't be able to guess my age, but uh, <laughs> I'm gonna guess your early 30s. Early 30s. Wow. I appreciate the, the, the kindness, Joe, but your numbers, <laughs> the ARV is off, man. All right, I got it. I, I, I turned 41 two weeks, actually the, the 27th. So we was in a mastermind. One of the days when I mastermind, I, I turned 41. Good. That's right. Good for you. Happy birthday. Yeah. Thank you, man. Um, <clears throat> so I, I, I came into real estate game in 2009. Uh, we all know that time you and I, at least, right? Great recession. The world was on sale. Uh, my ears was green. Didn't know much about real estate. I didn't even know it was a crash, yo. I came in a newbie, uh, very optimistic at the time because I had a I had a mentor named Chris Haskins. Shout out to Chris Haskins in, in my yeah, Virginia market. I like Chris. Good guy. Yeah, great, great guy. Um, <clears throat> he was five years in in two thousand nine, so he he was very versed, very experienced in the single family world. And he was like, you know what, Antonio, like you remind me of myself. I come from the music business, Joe. So he he was from the music business. So that's how we aligned and we connected was like from music. He's like, man, that's one of the hardest business to be in, man. He's like, how would you like to to learn this real estate thing? And I'm like, I don't have credit. I don't have a lot of money. I can't. That's not me. That was just my limited belief at the time. And he's like, man, what? he said, you don't need credit. You don't need money. There's this thing called wholesaling. And I'm like, um, I heard of wholesaling from rich dad, poor dad. But I still thought you need a lot of money and a lot of credit. So being that I had him just a call away it, it made it that much possible for me to get into it so he actually took me under his wing he was like how about this how much money do you have i say i got a couple hundred dollars but i do have a credit card with you know thousand dollars on it whatever the case may be yeah. <clears throat> he said i want you to order some bandit signs so i ordered 100 bandit signs joe and this was back when bandit signs you could put out 50 to 100 bandit signs and get a deal that's back when when you can Get motivated sellers from bandit signs. Now is a different time, but 
Yeah. Um, I ordered 100 band of signs, 100 steaks, put them out in all one night by myself. Let alone, this was a Virginia market, Virginia market, okay. the, uh, Virginia Beach, Norfolk, Hampton market. Um, so I put out 100 band of signs by myself in a matter of like four to five hours, right? From like midnight to like four ish in the morning, right? I, I just was pumped up. I was like, I got this guy who I can call to reach away. He's five years in. He's he's doing deals. I seen his deals. I was like, if he can do it, I can do it. Next thing I know, I would say about a week, a week to two weeks pass, right? After the band of signs, I get this one call. I was getting calls prior to that, but I get this one call. It was a crackhead house, four brothers, the, the and one sober brother, right? The one sober brother had a power of attorney to sell this house in, in Chesapeake, Virginia, 721 Potter Road, Chesapeake, Virginia. Never forget that house, right? And as soon as soon as we get this call, it came to my cell phone. I had my cell phone on these bandit signs. I had no structure, no systems. I just got, Chris was just like, just get started, man. I'm like, oh, okay, just, <laughs> just put all these signs on. So I'm getting these calls on my cell phone. Anyway, this guy called the one sober brother that was selling the, uh, the house in 721 part of road. His brothers were in the house. He was motivated. He had his whole family going on, his own house, but his brothers, his four brothers was living in 721 part of road. Four brothers cracked out and the neighbors was just, everybody, they was just complaining. Police was getting called a couple of times out the month because the, these brothers were just, it was call, causing ruckus in the neighborhood. So we go out there at the property and I just, man, I remember like yesterday, at my, just my mindset at the time, I'm like, who the hell would want to buy this? Like it was no power in the house. It was shit in the toilet. It was leaky. Uh, the ceiling was leaking in certain parts of the house. And it's just smelt, oh, it smelt like shit, man. And I remember I was talking, I was like, who would want to buy this? Like I just, would never, that never registered in my brain that people would buy these houses. And he, I remember like yesterday, he was like, it smells like money in here. <laughs> He's yeah. like, it smells like money. And just to make a long story short here, we're in the backyard with the sober heir, right? The sober brother, the four brothers, like one, I remember one was just laid out on the couch. He was just like this, like he was just drugged out, had liquor bottles on the, on, like on the table. It was a bad situation, man. So we're in the backyard on this tree stump with the sober brother that met us there. And we lock up this property in the backyard for $48,000, right? I'm actually, like taking notes internally because Chris is actually the one talking to the brother. He's negotiating. And I believe the brother wanted maybe like 60 ish K 65 K. Right. And I remember before we walked on the tree stump, Chris walked and I, that this was an early, early note I took on. I still use this concept to distill this trick to my day. Chris walked up to the worst part of the property outside where the, the, the unit was broken. And he was like, how much do you want for this property again? As he looked at the unit and he was like, oh, 65K. But um, and he was like, well, how long has this unit been broken? You mean and the air conditioning unit outside. And he yeah. just walked to the worst part of the outside of the house. And as we're saying this, like you hear the brothers, hey, bro, you're, you're like, and then he was like, hmm, how long your brother's been living here? Like it was just internally like devaluing the, the value of what the, the owner was asking, right? The, the, the sober yeah. brother. And like, next thing I know, we got them down to 48K from like, say, 65. We go to Tree Stump, we lock it up the property, a two page agreement, simple. At the time, it just looked at like Chinese, but it's, it's very simple. Two, pray, two page assignment purchase agreement, I mean, assignable purchase agreement, 48,000. We leave the, the property in Chris's truck because I rode with him. He had a house's wrap truck. And he called, as we're driving, he calls a buyer for 60,500. Wow. Uh, and I just remember two to three hours later, his buyer, he didn't even get to go inside the property. I think he just drove by it, right? He just took it. He said, I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Now, this was in 2009. This is in 2009, the Great Recession from 100 Bandit Signs. So this, 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 was a, this, end up, this was supposed to be a three-week closing, but they, this probably ended up taking a couple months due to uh, title issues. There was child support judgments from one of the crack. It was a couple of things they had to clear up. But this property took about two to three months to close. When it's supposed to take three weeks, but I made twelve thousand five hundred on my first first deal. That's amazing. That's so awesome. that, one of the things I yeah. one of the things I should note, people. You got to put yourself back in that day, two thousand nine. I should say <laughs> this too. Rewind itself a little bit too. Um, yeah. 
there are some guys out there in social media right now who think they invented wholesaling. They think that uh, they coached everybody who's doing wholesaling now today. And they didn't even get started in the business till like 2012, 2013, 2014. And they think they're the OGs. Well, whatever, right? Like, but here's the thing I want you all to, to, to understand. Wholesaling started like with, I'm looking at a book over here by Carlton. No, no, no. Um, Robert Allen. It's called Nothing Down. And it says on there, revised for the 80s. Okay. Wow. <laughs> revised for the 80s. <laughs> and whole, this stuff has been around for a long, long time. Very. And, uh. Antonio, I know you have coached a lot of the people who have been coaching other people who are now coaching other people. And yeah. so, but there were still people before us that were doing this business. And so mm -hmm. here's my whole point. I started studying real estate in about 2006 and wholesaling was really big back then in 2006. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. so when the market crashed in 09, there was a lot of people that quit wholesaling. A lot of people stopped doing it because they thought the market is falling apart. No. And I remember thinking and hearing this from people, there were no buyers. Nobody wanted to buy real estate anymore. But yeah. good thing you had a mentor with Chris who didn't care what people thought. Right. And, and good thing you didn't know any better either, because even when the market was at its lowest and it was free falling, you still had buyers that wanted real estate and you still had motivated sellers. You still had buyers, right? Well, the sellers were motivated sellers everywhere back in that time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. you can shit me just, just if you're watching this video, if you're new and haven't done a deal, if you've done a few deals right now, if you were in 2009, you'll probably be up to 20 to 30 deals because it was just very, very little competition. Now I was a new wholesaler coming into the game in a great recession, but there I will go to these rear meetings with Chris and you have new buy and hold investors coming in. So you had the new wholesalers. It was very little flippers, but you had these new buy and hold investors. So I was flipping to these buy and hold investors yeah. mostly, right? And we all didn't know any better. Like you said, I didn't know any better and they really didn't know any better. Or if they did, they were very sophisticated and they sold their assets before the crash. And it was yeah. waiting for this time to buy these properties very cheap, which I look at some of my properties I wholesale back then, Joe, and I'm like, Fuck, like I, I had that problem to contract for 5K and I sold it yeah. for 15K and made a 10K assignment fee. But it's like, why did I keep that? You know, just, just my mindset. I was looking for the, you know, the quick flip, quick flip. And I could have kept some because I was flipping. A, I was wholesaling a lot of properties back then. A lot of properties. Yeah. Mostly okay, from cool. Bandit so you got and, and MLS. Bandit Signs and MLS was my go-to. Yeah. You know, the, the market is constantly shifting. Back then, I remember... When, when I was learning wholesaling from people that were teaching it in Phoenix, Arizona, the joke was in Phoenix, you couldn't walk down the street and not trip over bandit signs. They were everywhere. Um, and so people were complaining back then about the competition. Um, and I remember, and I see this happen all the time. People are either complaining, most people, not everybody. everybody the only people that are complaining, by the way, are the people not doing deals. Mm. Right. And, and the people that are doing deals, they're just hustling their heads down and they're working, they're grinding and they're doing deals and they're making money. But everybody who is not even trying, they're the complainers. But like back then, people were complaining, oh, there's sellers everywhere, but no buyers. There are no buyers that will buy these deals. Yeah. And that just wasn't true. That just wasn't true today. And then today there's people complaining. It's either one or the other. You know, there's no motivated sellers or there's no deals out there or there's too many hedge funds or whatever. So people will always find something to complain about. But it's just history just keeps on repeating itself. Yep. And there is always opportunity there. Wealth doesn't disappear. It just transfers. So what may have worked a year ago doesn't work today, but it'll probably work again later. The cheese just keeps on moving. And so it's important to be as well educated as, as you can, I guess, is one of the things I'm trying to say. Have you seen that same kind of thing happen? Absolutely. I used to have a mindset of, I think probably like 2012 era. I was like, man, these deals are going to run out. And like the deals never run out. It's impossible for deals to run out. I flipped one property four or five times over my years. The same house. <laughs> yeah. It comes back yeah. to you, maybe from a motivated seller or a yo. It comes back in different forms. Um, deals are endless for people that's watching this. The deals are endless. Now, the, the marketing 
strategies may uh, pivot and shift and change. But a lot of times now I'm seeing the market strategies recycle. So at, at one point, I, I like um, cold calling was number one. <clears throat> like to me, I don't think cold calling is number one. I think P- PPL and, and direct mail are top top tiers for generating leads. You know, where that's not new under the sun. You know, back in the great, you know, 10 years ago, direct mail was killing. But now to me, direct mail is back. I guess just recycled all over and over again. Same with PPO. I think PPO has always been like a, a under the table, like a low key, uh, great marketing strategy. But now a lot of people are using PPO, which is a great way to get leads. PL is pay per lead. It's like Google, Facebook pay, pay. ads. And yeah, pay you per don't lead. have to run the ads. You pay somebody else to get, do that for you and you get the leads, yeah. right? Yeah, great way to get leads. Yeah. It's not the cheapest, okay, so you- like cold calling, but it is a great way. Yeah. All right. All right. So yeah. you started wholesaling in 2009. Yep. Were you able to build a big business pretty quickly? Yeah. My, well, um, depends on who's watching this, but I thought this was a lot of money. Uh, my first six months, I'm, I had $100,000 liquid in my account. And where I come from, Joe, I thought I had $100 million in my account. <laughs> Just from yeah. straight wholesaling, man. Uh, well, my second deal was a rehab, um, and I learned a lot in that rehab, which I only made five uh, k on. But along the other deals were all wholesale deals, um, and I looked up and like like you said earlier, like you know your heads down and you, you just grind and you and you you know not worrying about anybody else. I looked up in my bank account. And I had one hundred five thousand in my account. Hundred five thousand dollars in my account, and I was like, "Yeah, wow, like, let me keep going." So then I, I read the book um, at the time, uh, Timothy Ferris for our work week, and I started learning these outsourcing methods and delegating and hiring VAs, and uh, you know, so now I'm I'm starting to form structures and systems with you know, uh, at the time was twenty four hour answering service. I was using Pat Live, um, I, I, and I had. Uh, hired two VAs, and I remember when FreedomSoft was was the big CRM. They had their first launch with Preston and Italy, and I, I got the FreedomSoft launch, and I paid three K for that. I was feeling good, man. I had a CRM, I had a had a live um, answer service twenty four seven. I had two VAs that were taking on my managing my leads up front. I was always disappointed at the time. I, didn't, I hired no disappoint until like later, um, but I started to good about myself because I like now, like I'm not just. This is not a hobby. I'm actually, I'm actually creating a, a business and infrastructure. And look, next, look, next, next, next look up. Um, I um, had what was it? I think the most hours I had on the contract were like 18 deals, eight, 18 properties, band and signs, and MLS. That was my two because at that time, Joe, you can you can go look at a property, just say a hundred thousand dollars is listed for a hundred thousand dollars. I lock it up for a hundred thousand dollars, and I sell it to Joe McCall investments for $115,000. You did not care that it was listed for $100,000 because it was still a great deal. It was still a great deal. It was not many investors. We got to figure there was a time where it wasn't that many. It wasn't a competition. It was very, very low competition. It was yeah. too many deals for investors. So it was inventory on the market where you, I, I said to you $15,000 more than what it was listed on MLS, but it still fits your buy box. Yeah. <laughs> so at, at the time, the important thing was finding the buyers. And, yes. Um, right. So you were you on a lot of marketing for buyers? Yes. I, well, no, no. I was focused in marketing. I was on focus on finding the deals because a lot of my a lot of my buyers were coming from these real meetings. I was going to real meetings, um, and actually, I actually got awarded for a rookie of the year my first year at the the local Virginia Beach real. They, uh, I still have that that plaque today. Rookie uh-huh. of the year. That's um, cool. wasn't even a speck in it. I'm just at the rear meet. I'm in the back and they was giving these uh, awards out and that wasn't in my register, Joe, but they called my name for rookie of the year. Cause I was, I was, man, I was, I was hustling, man. I was really, the buyers were, these buyers were like, who is this Antonio kid? Like, damn, he's sent me three deals in a month. Like, how's he getting these deals? <laughs> and the signs and MLS, right? And uh, that was my two acquisition uh, lead generation sources back then. But like, yeah, I mean, times has changed now. We're in 2024. The time we're doing this video, Joe. It's a different breed right now, man. Different breed. It is. A lot has changed. Um, so what are you doing now mainly? Right now I'm focusing on cash flow, man. Um, really? What I've learned 
flipping houses over the years is that Uncle Sam is going to get half his cut. <laughs> He's going to get half yeah. of that plate. He's, He's going to get, get half, half of that plate. of it. He's going to get half. So, uh, I want like I, I want to say 2011, like uh, 2010, 2011. Like I, I really wasn't ready for what my tax, like the, what I had to pay in taxes. So I was making these, like, yeah, I figure my first six months in real estate, I had $105,000 liquid. But I was, you know, doing marketing and whatnot, but I was also spending, creating a, like a little lifestyle at the time that felt good about myself. You know, I was doing little travels and whatnot. I, you know, single dad, I have my, have my, have my, my once a time. He's, he's 22 now, I'm about to be 23. But it, it, it hit me in the face that, 2010 and then 2011 taxes really punched my face because that was an entire year of flipping houses not holding any of those houses and i'm like fuck man like i i didn't want this part of, part of the game i gotta i got this out it has to be a way so I, um i was always listening to ron Le shout out to chris hasn't again he gave me the ron Legrand. this back when cds we used to put cds into the in our deck in our cars the ride of ron Legrand. um ron uh, i'm sorry uh Greg Pinio, all, all Larry Goins, all of those guys. And then Greg Pinio really piqued my interest on the tax loopholes with mm -hmm. buying and holding. Also, Ron Grand too. I, I can't leave him out. But just like the tax loopholes, and it, it, you, you have houses. So my first buy and hold to cash enter, entering cash flow was in 2012. I finally bought my first property in 2012, Joe. Okay. Uh, Section 8. Um, and Again, this is, this, I, I started to learn something as I physically got into the experience of buying and holding. I'm up to two buying and hold properties in 2012. It was some freaking leaky toilet calls. It was free it, leaky toilet what? The leaky toilet calls, the tenants, dealing with tenants. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> dealing with tenants. And that yeah, was something I realized. I, I realized, I, like, I, I was a little, a little bit of cash flow. But I realized I hated tenants. I didn't like that. I didn't like, I was like, man, like, okay, so, so they buy and hold properties. This is your loophole to save on taxes. Well, at least the start of the secret to save on taxes. But I did not deal with, I didn't like, I like the tenant part, man. I did not like the landlord part. I did not like it. I, I dreaded it, actually. I even had a many, 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 uh, many property management company at the, at the, for my two properties. They're still calling me, hey, man, we got this plumbing issue. I'm at freak. I'm at the park with my boy. <laughs> just yeah. killed my whole day. It just kills my whole day. All right. Just so shout out to my guy, Scott, Scott Jones. I actually met him in 2011 at his restaurant. He owned at the time in Virginia Beach. Um, and he 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 was the guy that lost his 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 SAT in that crash. He lost, he lost everything. Yeah, he's everything. Had a really cool. We've had him in my podcast before. He, he was like, this was one of many guys and got burnt, like, like uh, Joe said, like, now there's new under the sun, right? Bird strategy is not new. They just put a name to, to that strategy. So he was the yeah. guy who was doing birds before the crash, leveraging debt, going, you know, taking refinancing, going buying profits, blah, 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 and he lost it all. So that's what scares me today about these bird guys, because these bird guys haven't seen a crash yet, because we haven't had a crash in 2008. But that's a whole other story yeah. for another day. Yeah. But uh, 2011, Scott was starting over. And he was he was about this uh, slow flip method, right? And I'm like, cool, I, I I like it, but I didn't really fully hear him because at 2012 I bought two two sec I, I bought two properties for Section Eight, but then I went back to <laughs> I was like 2012. I'm like, hey, tell me about that that slow flip again. And he's like, oh, he's like, man, like yeah, like you don't got to do repairs, you don't got to, you know, you just buying a property on acquisition, you are selling the owner financing, and I'm like, okay. I have one of my tenants that her lease is uh, coming up. I'm going to convert her over to a slow flip. All right. Still. So still to the day, Joe, this is Miss Clark. This is my, this is my home 2012, uh, 2000, yeah, 2000, going 2013. I went back to Miss Clark. I said, how would you like to own this property? She's like, oh, I can't go to a bank. I don't have good credit. I was like, you know what? I'm going to finance you. She was paying me. I paid $12,000 for this property, by the way, 12000 Got to figure this is a great recession. This is the type of prices we were, we were, we were in. So she was paying me seven hundred dollars a month for a property. I paid seven hundred dollars. I mean, twelve twelve thousand dollars for. So I she said yes to conversion. 
I say, okay, you're going to be responsible for repairs. You're going to have ownership of the home, right? And this is going to be your property. So, so that renewal, so me renewing her with a lease, I renewed her with a land contract or an agreement for deed with the terms. Um, I believe it was like seventy nine thousand total uh, for the property. She ended up giving me eighteen hundred dollars down, right? And her seven hundred dollars a month just continued, right? It stayed the same. To this day, this is twelve. No, this is eleven years later since the conversion. Joe, I haven't had no one call. One, I have, have a one repair call, one leaky toilet, no, not nothing. I don't even hear from her. I mean, we, we look in our ledger and we see every, I mean, she pays on time. I love this. This is, uh, instead of being the landlord, you're being the bank. You're literally the bank. Like it, yeah. it just increases your turn tremendously because there's no repairs in, in the, in the investment. Zero. And let's like, go back to this too. Uh, yeah. the taxes, which by the way, if you're so concerned about taxes, I don't know why you moved to California. I was, I, I, you know, I set myself up for that, but I, I knew he was going to bring California up. I'm from San Diego, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Make us, make us on um, the California move. So we plan to move to California in 2019. Me and me and my other half and our two kids. Um, they're three and seven right now. So 2019, Marissa got pregnant, unplanned. So that pause the whole move plan right so like okay all right so you're you're due in uh may of 2020 so okay so maybe after the baby we'll, we'll, we'll think about this so then COVID happened in march of 2020 while she's pregnant she's doing may of 2020 so it was like you know what like okay this this is not a good move but you got to figure I, well i didn't say this but in 2019 we we, we flew to, with an agent we met an agent there her name is kinsley showed us maybe like 12 houses and none of them were li likable to us and it fit our, our box our buy box, right but then randomly i'm gonna fast forward she my uh, marissa had our son carter uh may may have uh, basically like the heart of pandemic right yeah. heart of COVID. and then randomly i get up a, a call and an email email first and then a call from kinsley august of 2020. Antonio, I got you the perfect house. Like this, this is the great time to to get this house because, like, the world is kind of on. Like, like you can get really good deals. Yeah, really good deals. So I'm like, fuck this. Like, we just had a baby. Marissa's like, she's going through this uh, postpartum thing. She yeah. wasn't. She wasn't mentally there. So I like, I gotta. And I, she showed me the house. I loved it. And I'm like, I I gotta go try to sell Marissa. Like this is. I, I doubt it. I'm so it's not going to happen. But I, I showed her the property, and Joe, she did not want to move. <laughs> I said, yeah. "Babe, like, this, I like this is the house. This is it. Like I know we planned this a year over a year ago." And I was like, "I was like most of the times, like the stuff that you want don't come on your time." So she ended up letting me lead the decision, and we end up moving. She did not want to do it, but we end up moving September of 2020 uh, to to California. Now the reason why we are are beginning. The reason why we wanted to, wanted to move in California because um, my my connections here and it just fit both of our lifestyles. Now the taxes suck. Um, we don't live in part of California where we, we're riding over homeless people and stuff like that. Uh, we live in a, a, a great area. It's the people. The people here to me trumps the other stuff that people talk about with dealing with California. Um, for me yeah. personally, and now it's not for everybody. I'm not coming here with a backpack and trying to go to Hollywood and trying to be in the next movie or trying to blow up in the next song, right? I can't, I, you and I have entrepreneur mindset, right? Like just in my neighborhood, Joe, is a mastermind. Like literally just in my neighborhood. Like if I told you some of the people that live in my neighborhood, like I have private money coming out of my neighborhood. I have slow flip clients in my neighborhood. Like I have 11 of my neighbors are my slow flip clients that are buying multiple, multiple, multiple properties. My clients last week, he said, Antonio, my mom-in-law has a million dollars. Can you help us? It's, it's like it falls on my, it falls my lap, it literally. Yeah. Flat. So I, I have access to too much money for the type of deals that I buy. But that's OK. That's OK. Yeah. Um, I just love that I come come out of this. It's so easy for me. And it, even if you live here, Joe, you will find it really easy. Yeah, California has a, a near and close place to my heart. I was I was born like that. I was born in L.A., lived right, <clears throat> was raised in San Diego. And then I've even lived in. 
Bakersfield and San Francisco. Yeah. Um, so I, I, my mom's still out there. I go out there all the time. So I give people who live in California a hard time. A hard it's time. in love. It's yeah. all in love. Um, and, and, and by the way, I brought up a really good point because there uh, is a lot of money in California. And these buyers want to look for deals. They want to invest in deals. Yeah. And they're, they, they can't get cash from California. So where are they looking? They're looking in markets like St. Louis or Indianapolis yep. or Cleveland, Ohio, yep. Florida, parts yep. of Florida. Yep. So, and, when, and when I show them that when I bring in, when I introduce the slow flip model to them, yeah. our 50, 60K properties, you got, you got to figure like it's California. They're like, where can you find a, what, what, 50, like a house? Where is it? Just like, is it like, no, like, matter of fact, here's my property that I just purchased for 52.5. And they look at it like, oh man, can I get five of those? And it's boom. (laughs) It's that mindset here is like 50K to a lot of people here. Not everybody, but a lot of people here. It's just a peanut. So it's to me, I have no competition when it comes to that here when I'm presenting this slow flip method and how we how we build the infrastructure where they don't have to do repairs and it can it can they can um be hands off. And people think because I want to talk about this, people think you're crazy. Yeah. That there are deals that you can actually buy for for under sixty thousand dollars. So let's talk about this. This is the slow flip strategy. Scott's been on my podcast talking about it. You have a little different twist on it. I yep. think you buy your properties a little bit higher than Scott does, yep. um, which gets you a little bit nicer properties than what Scott yep. <laughs> buys. Um, and you, so the whole concept of this, and correct me if I'm wrong here, the whole concept of a slow flip deal is a way to get the cash flow out of real estate to buy assets without being the landlord. So mm-hmm. you buy a cheap property, oftentimes with private money, private investors' money. Pay them off in five to ten years, about five years, right? Five years. And then you sell you sell that de- thirty year owner financing. So you, so your cash flow not very much at all the first five years. You're paying mm-hmm. off that private money. Yep. But then the next twenty five years, so you own this property now free and clear, and you're getting a tremendous amount of cash flow from real estate without the hassles and of managing tenants and being a landlord. Is that right? That, yeah, you're spot on Joe. Um, yeah, the, the goal here, um, <clears throat> I call it, you have the, you have, you buy these cash. If you're buying cash, you're getting cash flow on day one, right? You're getting a high return, 20, 20% cash on cash return on a low, low end up to 35% cash on cash return. Usually our sweet spot is 25% cash on cash return. If you buy the cash, but you also have the people that are by these and they'll leverage private money. And I call that the free house method. So the reason why I call that the free house method is because you're using private money to acquire these assets, right? But you're not making cash flow on day one. You actually want to break even for 60 months because you're borrowing private money for, 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 for five years. I'm paying, I'm putting my private money lender. This is how I raise private money. This is one method of how I raise private money. I'm like, hey, hey, Mr. Private Money Lender. Hey, Joe. I'm actually putting you first for five years. I'm putting myself second, right? Because the reason why I want to put myself second is because I want to give you a great return, 12% annualized interest, is that which I pay my lender. But on the 61st month, right, now I get to eat, right? Because you're paid off. But I'm willing to be patient for five years to pay you your return for five years, yeah. right? So I'm going to break even on purpose to pay you your return. So that's how I usually pitch or... Um, yeah, this is how I basically pitch my, my private money lenders, and they love the model. They love it. They're like, oh, wow, so you're willing to break even for five years? They're not used to that concept. Like, you, you're not going to make any cash flow for five years. But I call that the free house method. I'm basically buying myself a free house in, in the yeah. worst case scenario. Now, go ahead, Joe. And the cool thing is it's not as hard as you guys might think to find no. private investors that are willing to lend this money. No. No. Not, and, and not yeah, and these private money investors, they're very well protected because why don't you give us an example deal um, of what, you know, you're coming out to St. Louis. Hopefully we're going to golf a little yes. bit together when you're here in a, probably less than a month. Yep. Um, so that'll be cool to hang out and talk about this some more. Maybe we can do another podcast or do some videos while you're here or something. That'd be I have cool. a video guy, by the way, remind me, Rob, my video guy can come and uh, we can film some content if you want. Yeah, that'd be cool, man. I'd love to do it. Okay, cool. All right. Well, so give us an example deal 
uh, of a typical deal that you might find in a market like St. Louis? Yeah. So my tip, my typical buy box for myself and what my clients buy. Now, let me go let me, let me backtrack about a year. Right. We've been buying in your market, St. Louis and the surrounding Illinois market for nearly two years. A year. I'm just say a, less than a year ago, we can buy twenty five, thirty thousand dollar properties. Turnkey. Turnkey. And I will buy thirty thousand dollars from a private money lender five years and usually thirty thousand dollars, 12 percent over the course of five years, six hundred sixty seven dollars, thirty three cents. And you can have the free house method, the break even method. But those all been brought out that are turnkey. Now, there's many. Of them. Go ahead. When you say when you say turnkey, what do you mean by that? Like like when I say turnkey, some of them are slightly rehab, Joe, like they were slightly rehab. Some of them uh, rent ready. Rent ready is what I call turnkey. Rent ready, move in ready property turnkey. No leaks. There's no new carpet, sometimes new laminate floors. The kitchen has the basic new cabinets. I'm talking about that look. Right. Yeah. Those type of condition properties, in my personal opinion, have been all brought up. Now, there you can trickle cost one every now and then. But like, like, again, nearly a year, less than a year ago, you can just go on MLS and Zillow. And there was a, it was an, so many of them. But now our slow flip buyers, our slow flippers, right? We it's a lot of us right? and is we bought them up in that price range. However, there are still people that are buying them in that price range, buying properties in that price range, but they need a lot of work. So my buy box changed in along with my clients because I still like that condition of property. So we're buying properties 40 to 60 K on average. Our, my sweet spot has been a hovering around that 50 K mark. Same type of property but it's actually in a better class area is now like a C to sometimes B class area, 50 K. And I have no issues. I'm, I mean, we have a better quality, uh, slow flip tenant, slow flip occupant. Um, is that a class area? They, they, they pay better. Um, does the return go down a little bit? Yeah, but I'm still hovering on a low end. Like I said earlier, 20%, if you're paying cash for these properties, it's a 20% cash on cash return, but worst case you'll break even because if I buy it, so it's like, we have a property, I, I text you the actual when we get off or maybe we can sh share some pictures, but I'm buying a property. We're closing on this Friday. Uh, it's a three, I think it's a three, one all brick with a carport. And if you see the, if you see, geez, like I'm getting it for 52, five, mm. 52, five, we can get, you know, four, and I'm going to show some numbers wise, we owner finance these properties on the back end on a, on a total sale date. Cause this wrote the numbers about 52, five, I'm going to owner finance it for 89, nine. This is the projected numbers. Cause I haven't got it. I still have to close on the first before we fill it with an yeah. owner. Operator. But I'm buying for 52, five, I'm going to get 89, nine, I'm projected to get 89, nine on the back end total sales price. 4K down. So that owner occupant is going to bring 4K non refundable down, which leaves our balance at 85.9. So we're going to finance 85.9. They're going to pay me $1,300 a month over the course of 30 years. Now, if I borrow, I'll borrow, I wouldn't borrow, I'll borrow $50,000 from a private money lender. $50,000, 12% over the course of five years is $1,122. And I believe 22 cents. So $1,122. So that's still a break even method because tax and insurance, if I get $1,300 from my own occupant, I'm basically breaking even for five years. Same similar concept to 30, 30K properties, but I bumped it up, but I can get a little more for this turnkey, all brick, three bedroom, one bath house with, 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 with a car carport. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that, you're buying it for about $50,000. Yep. And you're selling it for about $90,000 on owner financing. Plus interest. Um, plus always interest, right. Plus interest, correct. But the, it works out to be where the person buying it with owner financing, their total payment's about the same as what it would be if, they, if it was rent. Is that right? Correct. Literally. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you, and you, are you doing it as a, a land contract so, or, or contract for deed? Yeah, contract for deed or some people call it land contract. Yeah. So I, I'll do a land contract, um, which spells out the terms I just, just said, 89000 What's your down payment? Down payment would be 4000 the balance would be uh, eighty nine nine minus four thousand would be eighty five nine. Then I have the interest uh, to break down the monthly payment off the eighty five nine. So thirteen hundred dollars. What would what would the interest thirteen hundred dollars for eighty five nine over the course of thirty years? Now we need to break out a calculator for that, but just say twelve point nine two percent interest, right? Yeah. 
that will all spell out in the land contract. Uh, basically, the, the, the four terms for, between myself and the owner occupant and also yeah. spelling out that they are res- full responsible for the repairs as well. So I'm in California. This property is in the Midwest. I do not want to get a leaky toilet call. It's just, just not the case. That is non-negotiable for me. And yeah, the great. Okay, so um, I'm writing some notes here because I got a lot of questions I want to. Yep. I want to ask you. Um, why don't you do? Why don't you just give the seller? The, I'm sorry. Why don't you just give the buyer the deed to the property so that you're not even on title? anymore so if something does happen it's totally 100 percent on the buyer that's in the property does that make sense yeah that's a great question i like to be in the driver's seat 24 7 with this with 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 control and i feel like i'm losing some control if i provide the deed to the owner occupant because now i can't evict them like a tenant now with the agreement for deed um backtrack a little bit with the agreement for deed or the land contract we still hold the deed to the property. So the deed is still in our name or my name, right? Or my company name until they pay me off in full in 30 years or buy me out. Very rarely they'll buy me out, but just say they go to full 30 years. Now they get the deed versus if we do a, the traditional owner finance method, get the deed at closing. Now I'm really in a passenger seat because if they default, I have to go through the whole foreclosure process, which can take God knows who, how long, right? Versus a, the, the land contract, if they default, right, it's a two to three month eviction process. Simple. Get them out in two to three months for an eviction process with the land contract. My marketing team comes in, we rinse and repeat, get a whole new owner occupant with a new 44K down, a new 89.9, and maybe probably more than that, those terms because these owner occupants really go and fix up these houses a lot of cases. So they maybe put carpet into the property, maybe did some new paint. Right. Maybe they they say this house is brick. Right. Because it's the real the house I'm talking about is brick. Maybe they painted the outside from that regular brick looking color to white. That boosts the value up a little bit. And I acquired a property from a two to three month eviction versus a a year or nine month foreclosure. Right. I can probably get seven K down instead of thirteen dollars a month. I can get fifteen hundred dollars a month. So I, I look at it from the back end, the back end aspect that with the agreement for deed versus doing traditional owner financing. I'd rather keep the deed because it keeps me in, in the driver's seat versus, I mean, um, in any in event that they default on the property, I can evict them like a tenant, which is one of the best. Okay. Best so um, what, what on average do you see as a default rate for these land contract buyers? Oh man, like one to 2%. You, you got to figure like it is very low. And actually um, sometimes me and me and Scott, I, I take each other. I'm like, Hey, you got any evictions lately? Oh man. I, Bought X amount of properties. I have zero evictions. I had in my three in my last. I had I, I know I know this time, but I had one eviction, one full eviction. Have I had some people that defaulted? Yes, but by the time we maybe like call or text or maybe put like a little five day notice on the door, they pay, they pay. But one of my last three years, one eviction. They're like, yeah, is insane because you think about it. Yeah, you put yourself in their shoes. Like, Three to five K down is average of what we, we get non refundable down for these slow flips, right? That is a lot of money for the for the type of people that we're filling these properties in, right? They may make fifty K a year, forty K a year, um, may have, I don't know, a few thousand saved up. Cause I do ask for a bank statement when we vet vet them, right? I'm like, okay, they, yeah. I mean we're asking a thousand a month for this property. They got twenty two hundred dollars saved up. That's pretty pretty typical, right? And they say they got another uh, lump sum coming from somewhere, right? So they're going to fix it probably in the next three months. But uh, if they give me, you know, just say $3,000 non refundable down, for an example, right? And over the course of just say two years before they did, they put a cumulative over two years, 10000 to the property. That's hard to walk away from for, for an average person. That's very hard. They may get late. We may call them like, hey, you know, we don't want to do this, but we have to put a notice on the door for an eviction. And then we do put a notice and they see like, hey, we're going to, you know, get the attorney involved to, to start the eviction process. The time is paid. It's paid through the ledger on our, on our portal. Um, get much eviction. It's hard to say, man. It's, it's, it's... Well, I, I wonder, so if it were the same, 
if you mm -hmm. gave them the deed to the property. And, and you know, once they were late, you, you give them a notice of default and you get really aggressive in, in starting that procedure, that process. I'm not an expert in foreclosures and I, I need to get more information on that. But if yeah. you start the process early enough, you could get the deed back um, and foreclose within three to four months. Um, but you can also negotiate with them, which it sounds like what you already are doing. You tell them, hey, listen, yep. you know, you're in default. You need to catch up or we're going to kick you out. And most yep. of the time you can get them to, to, to get back. You can adjust or modify the loan. Um, here's my concern, my fear, rather. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to get, I'm gonna get a, 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 a threatening letter saying, hey, this property that you own is not being taken care of. And mm. you need to, uh, you need to, or getting a letter from, um, from the, the, not a letter, like being featured on the, on the local news saying, mm. Hey, this, this, um, this slum landlord owns these properties and he's not taking care of them. And look at these right. properties They're They need a bunch of work and, um, he's, and they could look in records and see who owns these properties and sees that. Yeah, he's just right. he's really just renting them out, but he's calling it something different. Like, wouldn't it be better? Wouldn't you be more safe just deeding the property to these buyers? Does that make sense? Yeah, in, in that aspect of how you how you how you're 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 thinking. Yes. However, I don't think personally I can sleep like a baby at night knowing that I deeded it over. So they say, for an example, one of my markets is is um, is Birmingham, Alabama. Right um, now in Birmingham, Alabama or at state Alabama, if I did a land contract in Alabama and I do lease options in Alabama, I know you're you're big on lease options. I actually do a lease option in Alabama. I don't prefer lease options. But the reason why I do a lease option in Alabama is because if I did a land contract, it would take 12 to 18 months for a foreclosure process. And I don't want to go through the hell of 12 to 18 months of foreclosure and then non-payment and they're dragging it out as far as on the occupant. I'm cool on that. So I do a lease option so that because that brings me back to the fact that it's a two to three month eviction. But to your point, as far as like getting letters from the city or being like on the news or whatnot, it goes back to my point of why I like a good product. I like turnkey properties. Um, I, I'm, I used to be, especially in my Virginia market, cause that's another one. That's my, that's my hometown market. I started buying slow flips, um, until it almost got nearly impossible to find properties under 60 K, um, when the pandemic happened, but, uh, we'll, I'll buy a property free, freaking kitchen, find it freaking on fire on fire damage and start in the next seven days, like or less. And, and, and it, it still blows my mind away. Uh, to this day that you can slow flip anything and that yes you can slow flip anything but to your point earlier like it also you're slow flipping to a person where they are responsible for the repairs you usually get a handyman in the aspect that you slow flip to they're dragging their ass now it kind of haunts you on the back end because ne next thing you know it has a city violation on it who's that gonna come back to <laughs> me now i'm yeah. calling back the handyman that I slow flip it to, like, hey man, I got this letter, blah, blah, blah. What's going on? Like, I didn't fix the kitchen. Why you didn't, blah, 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 blah. Oh yeah, well, you know, we're, we're just gonna get to it in two months. I'm like, well, I have a deadline here. I have a letter. Like you, this is, you're responsible for for this. So I got that aspect. So I changed my 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 Bible. And this, this is, doesn't happen every day. This is so rare, but it still yeah, happens. Sure. Mm -hmm. My product is turnkey, Joe. Like I, again, I'll, I'll send you some pictures of what the one I'm closing on Fridays. You can kind of see a general idea of what I'm buying. But my clients come into my 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 community, and my my, my model is turnkey. But I have a a uh, slow flip uh, or a cash flow innovator model where people come into my program, and I'm actually handing these people a slow flip deal. We're filling a property for them, right? And you got to figure these my clients. Most of the time, they aren't. They're entrepreneurs, but they're not real estate investors. So, for an example, one of my clients live in uh, Tampa, Clearwater area. He owns a yachting company, right? I don't. I don't feel like get a property that needs a ton of repairs. And he may call me back. Like, hey, man, I paid for your program, man. Like, I got this sticker on the door versus the property I'm paying. I'm. I'm actually buying this Friday. 
I handed him that property, for an example, turnkey doesn't need any work. Move in ready. And if he actually paid cash for that property at 52.5, he'll get $1,300 a month on day one. We can all sleep like a baby at night. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, this is exciting yeah. because I am looking at properties right now in St. Louis on Redfin. I am listening. A, I know it's a disrespect. <laughs> and no, and you found you found it isn't of these properties. Yeah, and it's insane. Nice. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just, just right now, if you're watching yeah. this or listening to this, get, go to Redfin or Zillow and look for properties priced between forty and sixty thousand dollars in St. Louis, Missouri. Right, yeah. the whole metro area, a large Illinois and Missouri side. And some of these properties, three bed, two bath in decent areas, um, you look at, it just needs cosmetics, maybe carpet and paint. Yeah. Um, these are rent ready. They really are. And you could sell these things all day long with owner financing. Easy, easy. I just texted you, check your tech. I just see the one I'm closing on Friday. Holy cow. You got the text? That's nice. That looks like a $120,000 property. God, did you see? I texted him the property immediately. It pinged on his side. He said, "Holy! You saw his reaction? That that is my product. That is my product, Joe. That's why I I, I buy those products in fifty ish. I like that. I can I can my clients can I provide them that. I'm not getting any no sticker, no inspections, no. Yeah. I can get occupancy permits, which you need those in those markets. Yeah. Easy, easy." Thirteen hundred dollars a month. We're gonna we're projected to get. If I we might shoot for fourteen hundred because it's brick and it, it just looks nice. And it's, now, and it's and gonna so be about, it's, it's a good area. Occupancy permits. Some areas require that. Some don't. But yes. in order to, if order for some that house, whether they own it or rent it, they have to get an occupancy inspection. Yes. Or permit. Explain that. Yeah. So that was something we 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 uh didn't really love them, but like we really affected us when we start buying your, your market in St. Louis and some surrounding Illinois market, you know, the Cahokias and all of that. Once we start buying them and that's when, and I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to buy them better. I'm, like what you see. Yeah. This I don't looks want, like it's just rehabbed and it's staged. <laughs> that's my point. And you see, look, you see, it was a, uh, a, a reduction. I did highest and best, you know, I was like, no, 52, five, freak it. It still works. It still works. But yeah, the occupancy permits is basically the, once, like Joe says, once you buy it, you know, once you own as you as an owner, or if you rent it out to a tenant per se, right? These this, the county or the south, and they inspect these houses like if there's freaking Section Eight inspectors, inspectors, yeah, and they see the houses have any leaks, any uh, any um, is the roof decent enough? The windows are decent enough? Is like this is wild before they even um, offer an occupancy permit. Yep. So I feel like, again, like I want to sleep like a baby at night, whether it's for my cell phone corner or for, from one of my cash flow innovator clients coming in and yep. I'm providing them the product, we can both sleep like a baby at night because I'm providing a livable turnkey shaped product where yep. you can get an occupancy permit on the back end, easy, on day one. And you're, you're doing something good for the community too, aren't you? Absolutely. We're providing affordable housing to people that, you know, they can't go to banks. And some people may be thinking about this, like, oh, like, you know, these people must have bad credit. You'd be surprised that I, I have quite a few people that have good credit, but they haven't done their taxes in two to three years because they're they're uh, self-employed and they're entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So we're providing houses to these people as well. Yeah. And I actually had three buy me out in the pandemic, actually, as 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 um. Just three months ago, I had one buy, buy me out, a property I had in Hampton, Virginia. Um, was it Hampton? Yeah, Hampton, Virginia. The guy brought me out. Um, I, I actually, he brought me out, I think his, his uh, for $115,000 was his balance. And that actually, I brought, so let me get some numbers. I brought this property in 2019 to rehab for uh, 45K. I put 25 into it. So I was in it for 70K. My, my goal was to fix and flip, put on a market for one twenty nine nine, get a quick, you know, buck. Right. And it's set on the market. Once I put on the market again, my intent was to fix and flip, not to slow flip. And it's set on the market for 30 days. And I call my agent, Jeanette. I'm like, Jeanette, like, we're not getting any bites. He's like, no. So you got like two showings, but nothing, no offers, no, not many calls. I'm like, why? I was like, OK. So this was in the 2019, right before the pandemic. So I was, you know, I was like, let, let me go against my grain. I'm just going to refi because I, I borrowed private money on it for the for the fix and flip. Um, 12 month money on it. I, I believe it was from one of my private lenders. 
Julie. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to I rehabbed it. Let me go against my grain and borrow some 30 year money on it. Right. And refi. And, and that's what I did. I, I refi and I actually I got set. I did it for 75 K. So I basically walked away with a couple grand because I, I was in it for and I borrowed 75 K and I paid my lender off. Um, and my monthly payment was, I don't know, like 400 and change. <laughs> it was cheap. Yeah. 400 yeah. and change. So I slow flipped it out for 129.9, right? Got 10K down, non refundable. Got to figure this is a rehab property. And I ended up getting $1,100 a month. My mortgage payment was 400 and change. So I got 10K down up front. Yeah. 129 back in. So his balance is 199 and he was end up my my slow flip buyer at the time that brought me out three months ago. He was paying me eleven hundred dollars a month. So I was loving that. I was like, okay, cool. I love it. You know, then next thing I know in December of last year, I was like one of my, my, my property management girls, hey uh 40 Harvard bro wants to buy you out. I said, Okay, damn. It's like damn, I was enjoying that little uh seven, eight hundred dollars a month. So I was like, cool, he wants to know his balance. So we sent his balance, I think his balance was like 115 and change, whatever the case may be. And I went I, I went in my ledger or my portal to see what my balance was because I borrowed 75K and I think mine was like 68 and change. I was like, okay, well, you know what? 115 minus 68, okay, that's 32 plus 15, that's 47 thousand dollars. I could just go buy me one more slow flip, <laughs> one free and clear. So he brought me out three months ago, Joe. And that's exactly what I did. I, I took that money, went into your market. <laughs> And bought me a yep a forty five thousand dollar house. For now I own a free and clear, and that forty five thousand dollar house is getting me ten fifty a month. So I went from a loan that I had debt for thirty years, paid it off because my slow flip buyer brought me out, got basically forty five thousand dollars in change, and after closing costs, and I went to go buy a forty five thousand dollar house in your St. Louis market, free and clear, and that's getting me ten fifty a month. <laughs> I love this. Okay, <laughs> let's let's go back to my earlier question though. For some yeah. reason, and I've talked to Scott Jelinek a lot about this. Yeah. Just, just, I don't know, call me a, a wuss, scaredy cat. Like, I, I'm got, I'd rather just give, even if I have to go through the foreclosure process, even if it you takes six months, yeah. I'd rather just deed the property to the buyer. Yeah. Right. So, is that, a, or do you think, no, that's a stupid move? Like, does that make sense? No, it does make sense. Uh, I think it's a personal preference. I just hear I've heard way more horror stories foreclosing on people versus evicting people. Me, me personally, I just I've heard more, way more horror stories. Yeah. Okay. I, I just think you do, a lot of, do you do a blue foreclosure possibly? I could. Yeah, you could. You 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 want to give that deal with this model? You're like, oh man, I'm looking at these properties in my market. I see an abundance of them. Your exit. You actually want to do a traditional owner finance method if you Maybe. is that what you're i'm just concerned about liability i'm concerned about being in the local news right mm -hmm. well, because like a, oh, go ahead there's a guy um in st louis <clears throat> his name mm -hmm. is uh was he, he passed away um litz l-i-t-z mm -hmm. he had a huge company in st louis that owner financed a ton of homes hundreds if not thousands of them and um when the market crashed, he, he went down in flames and he was committing a lot of mortgage fraud. So the um, but he was doing a lot of land contracts. And I, I part of me in the back of my mind is like, I don't want to be that guy. I don't. And he when it came out in the local news, what he was doing, that whole thing, people just don't understand it when they're looking at it from the outside. And and. Uh, I don't know. I'm wrestling with it. And I've, I've talked to Scott about this and he keeps on telling me, would you just sh stop, Joe? You sound like one of my students that are yeah. whining and complaining. Oh, this doesn't work. <laughs> so it yeah, works. Anyway. It, it does. It OK, I, I, need to, well, I need to. But here, here's another thing. Here's another protection um, that I personally do. And my clients come into my cash flow innovator program outside of St. Louis. I know you can't do this in St. Louis, but we do buy an abundant of them in the Illinois market. Right. And obviously Virginia, Burma, Alabama. I put my properties in a land trust. Now, probably in a, versus probably ninety nine percent of the people that watch this, they probably put properties. If I hope not a personal name, but probably in an LLC, right? A limited liability company. Uh, you're still sticking your head out for lease properties that, and, and you're easy to find. You're I can look up anybody in a limited liability like owns a property in an LLC. Oh. 
Tony Edwards owns that company. Oh, Joe McCall owns that company. You know, you can't find me in a land trust. Good luck. Shout out to Ron LeGrand that put me onto that in 2009. For, you know, and I've been using land trust since 2009. I'm heavy on land trust. Yeah. Predator, creditor, um, any, anybody just, you know, their any own occupant, they can sue the freaking land trust. They can, or any, and let alone, I mean, if, you, if you're going to the part where like you've been on the news, yeah, one, two, three, Main Street Land Trust. And then my next property, 323 uh, McCall Land Trust, they're all address land trusts. They're going to be calling out the address on the news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because that yeah, was showing yeah, the tax record is the land trust. So that's all funny. my properties I put in at my address land trust, and that shows on the tax record. Now, behind the land trust is the agreement that never, that's, that's never public information. That's never on the public, right? That's just for my personal files only. They can't, they, I'm oblivious to the world when you buy properties in a land trust. Now, my company, my LLC and my holdings company, that is the owner of my land trusts, but nobody knows that. They don't even know what my name and my companies are. They just see the address land trust. So, um, Again, outside of St. Louis, uh, where I'm forced to put properties in my holdings company because you can't do land trust there, which that's what sucks. But I buy in a multiple other markets where Virginia, Birmingham, Alabama, Ohio, the Illinois. Well, you can still have it in an LLC, but then have a registered agent Correct. The, as the address of the LLC, which could be an attorney. Correct. Um, so like they still couldn't know that you owned it if you had a registered agent. Um, that's but it, 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 this is really awesome. Uh, I've got a couple questions quick for you, and I appreciate your time. Uh, yeah. Oh, and I have, I do have to go to, I just remembered something. How do you find the, uh, how do you find your deals? Man, that's a great question, Joe. Um, people are probably expecting me to say some crazy, sophisticated way. Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. I yeah. love, we love Facebook Marketplace. And the reason, it's a few reasons. One is easy to vet. Uh, I know they say not to judge a book by its cover and, and whatnot, but. I can go to a profile. I mean, their Facebook page and look at their profile, look at pics, and I'm like, mm, they, they they look promising. <laughs> and and, and I, I, all most of the com I, I personally have a, my marketing team that that fill all our properties. But to me, messages and emails and text these days is a form of, of like a contract because you can go back. Oh, I didn't say that. He didn't say that. Hey, we're you know on this Facebook message here on July twenty first, twenty twenty three. You said this. Oh, I'm sorry. I did say that, <laughs> but yeah. so I can I can I can vet the person, like making sure they don't have no no their profile pic, let them snort and coke freaking pic or some fifty two henny bottles, right? You know, um, yeah, they yeah. look reasonable. They got a family. They look promising. So I vet that, um, and it's just easy to find. Like you, we can we can put like that property that I sent you, Joe. Yeah, it's gonna be a multiple multiple offer situation. My properties and that product you see are multiple offers, dude. Like these are, and, and was what's it a two one or three one? I can't remember. Two bed, one bath. And like nine, nine ish, nine hundred ish square feet. Yeah, nine. Yeah, that's going to be a multiple offer situation, which I love. Like versus the ones that need a lot of work, they take maybe. Yeah. I mean, they still take. They still fill fast. Two weeks, whatever. Next day, I get uh, next day, next day to two max. Marketing team, hey, we got uh, uh we got four K. A down 89 um 89 uh 13 dollars a month oh i got another offer two hours later we got another offer blah, blah 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 and then i'll let them fight over it next thing i knew I'm, i may end up getting 5k down 1300 dollars, or maybe 3k down and 1400 i now pick and choose i may let them fight over yeah. it so it's do, so do you have to do loan originators mortgage originators to do this or is it just you have your own pre-qualify pre-qualifications -pre yeah, I don't worry about. Yeah, I have my own pre pre qualifications. I know people ask me about the usury laws and, and whatnot as well. But yeah, like the deed, the deeds aren't getting transferred along with, with that, and then also with the Dodd Frank Act, people ask me about the hey, what about the Dodd Frank Act? You know, you, you can't do past I think it's like three three properties a year, something like that. Yeah, I mean the deed are the deeds aren't getting transferred with with this model. Well, going to your point, if you did the tr traditional, yeah. Uh, the, the deeds are getting transferred, so now it, could it trigger the offering act? Possibly, yes. More, than, yeah. Yeah. So if the deed it. does get transferred, you have to use a licensed loan originator, right? To get to, to pre qualify these folks, harder to find buyers if you have Correct. to use a licensed loan originator, right? And yeah, 
One, I guess another another advantage of using the land contract with the low flip model is that the deeds aren't getting transferred at all. Right. At all. Yeah. Not at all. Um, this has been so good. Um, oh, yeah, I got related to that. I'm sorry, before we move on. How, how do you pre-screen your buyers? Do you look for like certain income? What background check do you do? That kind of stuff. I don't do any background checks as far as credit checks. I mean, if they're having felonies, we don't we don't check any of that. We check for that that down payment, down payment, and job verification. That's all I care about. I just care about the down payment and job verification. Let me know that you can afford the thousand or eleven hundred dollars a month. That's all I care about. Because um, if not, it just defeats the purpose of this whole model. Me doing credit checks. Um, oh, you got you got uh, evicted. You know, two last two years, so you're disqualified. We don't do any of that. You got to figure these people putting three, four, five k down. To me, that is a that's a major qualifier and a check off on my part, which they can't never get back anyway. So they they're, they're going to um, that's non refundable. And in all that job, maybe they work at, they've been working at Best Buy for four years, and you know they're sitting in the St. Louis market and they're making you know forty k a year, and then they got um, this says a mom working at Best Buy and she got a boyfriend that's bringing an extra twenty five k. I'll take it all day long. Take it all day. So job fair. And oh, I'll also, I'll, I, I've been lazy with this as of probably my 10, but usually I ask for at least one month bank statement. Say that last part again. I said, I've been lazy with this probably my last 10 uh, slow flip yeah. purchases, but you, you, I usually ask for a one month bank statement. Okay. One month bank okay. statement. We make it easy peasy for these people to come in and get qualified, man. Job verification yeah. and obviously the down payment showing that you can, you can make that down payment up front. Yeah, Scott Jelinek is even more, um, uh, uh, even less strict. It's like the first one to bring the money, you know. Yeah, because then yeah. you can never get accused of um, discrimination if it's just the first qualified one that brings the money. That's what yeah. he does. Cool. All right, man, Antonio. How can people get a hold of you? Are you active on the social medias and YouTube's and stuff like that? Yeah, of course. I mean, YouTube. I probably have over two hundred videos. I uh, just. YouTube, Antonio Edwards Real Estate. Um, I know I'll probably pop up from that. Subscribe yeah. to that. Instagram, I'm more active off of off the TikToks and Facebooks I'm, or, or more active on Instagram. So Antonio underscore the letter J underscore Edwards. Okay. And uh, if, I know we didn't talk about this, but I, I have for my slow flip clients, my cash flow clients, I have a whole SaaS program built for our slow flippers coming out. By the time you, you launched, I think you said three weeks. Yeah. Um, the phase one would be launched and I'm super pumped about this is geared towards slow flip deals going to be in there. Your CRM, you can manage your slow flip occupants. I'm going to have AI built in there where it automatically sends out to people that's late calls, text with AI. And, and, sh and you can uh, has pre-built an insurance uh, qualifiers in there for you to insure your properties. It's I have it's so much. It's so much. Oh, you got to go. It's, it's, a, it's a cool program, but it's cash flow. You can go to cashflowinnovator.com. Right now, okay. Uh, there's a wait list right now for it, um, but by, like I said, by the time you launch this podcast, phase one should be should be out. And now I'm super duper pumped, man, because I've been working on this for almost a year. Cashflowinnovator.com. Yep, I'm gonna get old there right now and join the wait list myself, man. Yeah, and uh, it, it's, okay, it's man, gonna uh, disrupt, disrupt the whole slow flip um, industry uh, for people that own slow flip. This is is solving my problems. And I know I, I've been game for so long with buy slips that it's good. It's going to solve every slow flippers problem outside of fun. Everybody needs funding. Right. Right. But yeah. all the issues that come with the slow flips and the late and the it's it's going to solve so many problems, man. I can't wait. The, this is the well, first. This is, really uh, this is going to be the first. Uh, nice. I love it. Yeah. Cashflowinnovator.com. I'm there right now. I'm going to join the wait yep. list. Yes, sir. And uh, this is good. Antonio, thanks for being on the show, man. I appreciate you. Um, guys, he is more active on Instagram, but he's also got a lot of good videos on YouTube teaching this stuff, diving deeper into this strategy. Looking forward to hanging out with you when you come to St. Louis. Yeah. Um, maybe too, go man. to a Cardinals game, play some golf. Love to hang out with you, Antonio. Oh, right, man. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate you, man. Uh, appreciate you, too. We'll see you guys later. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.